The theory behind the use of botulinum toxin for scars is that it enables us to immobilize the scar by denovating the underlying muscle. And we know that if a scar is immobilized, this can potentially decrease the amount of fibrosis and potentially it can decrease inflammation and erythema and even the size of the scar. There, there are some publications that I mentioned during my lecture for the AADVMX. One of them looks at the basic science, which I think is really fascinating. It's the paper by Austin and colleagues, the cellular response of hypertrophic scars to botulinum toxin A. And this paper provides a nice review of the literature as far as basic science is concerned. And what it finds is that there are some studies to support the concept that botulinum toxin can regulate matrix metalloproteinases and have other mechanisms of action to modulate collagen synthesis and remodeling of collagen. The mechanism of decreased skin fibrosis is thought to be a decreased fibroblast proliferation through modulation of TGF beta activity and also a decrease in the transcription and the expression of profibrotic cytokines in the dermal fibroblasts, which are present in keloids and hypertrophic scars. It's an intradermal injection on both sides of the scar or on both sides of the planned excision site. And this injection can be done intraoperatively or it can be done two weeks before the procedure. We need to limit doses to minimize any temporary functional defects from the toxin. Typically, what I recommend is no more than 25 units of onobotulinum toxin into one muscle at one site. That would be a multiplication factor for me of 2.5 if I were using abobotulinum toxin. If we are using botulinum toxin for a scar around the forehead of the glabellar, I say usually no more than 25 to 50 units there of onobotulinum toxin, and again multiply by 2.5 for abobotulinum toxin, and no more than one to five units in the lower face. We have to be especially careful there not to get any aesthetic or functional impairment. My take home message is for anyone contemplating using botulinum toxin for keloids or for hypertrophic scars are firstly to think of patients who are at high risk for those occurrences. So that would be by virtue of the location of the scar, sometimes the ethnicity of the patient, and particularly scars which are against the skin tension lines. We have shorter acting toxins coming through the pipeline, specifically botulinum toxin type B, e, and that could be of interest for modulation and improvement of scars. Shorter acting toxins could be of interest because we want to be impacting the mobility of scars in the immediate post-operative period. So the benefit of a shorter acting toxin is firstly that it could fit very well with the time course that we want to be using in order to improve scars after a procedure. And secondly, it could be more cost effective. And the one point I'd really like to make is that there are evidence gaps. We need more randomized controlled studies. We need standardized images. Some of these publications relate to studies where there were combination treatments. And the question there is to pass out how much of the results were actually due to toxins.